Such now from the FBI. Parents, you should know what your kids are doing on their phones and computers. At all times. You've heard it before, but there are people out there looking to sexually exploit your kids. Our Mandy Knoll investigates how the pandemic is playing a role in an uptick in child exploitation cases. More kids are home and spending more time on their phones and computers during the pandemic. They may be unsupervised. Predators know this and they're taking advantage of it. More people are at home, more people are accessing the internet. It's hard when parents are trying to work. It's been always a steady stream of these cases since COVID-19 hit. We've opened more cases this year than we did in years prior. These two women are the experts. Tanya Sablatora is a supervisory special agent for the FBI. She's in charge of the violent crime squad in Little Rock. She finds the predators. Kristen Bryant is an assistant U.S. attorney. She prosecutes the predators. Predators on the internet are experts at finding your weakness. Playing a game of pretend with your kid. Someone who may say, hey, I'm friends with so-and-so from your school. You can trust me. You can talk to me. It's social media. It's gaming sites. It's any place your child can chat. They're tricked into thinking they're talking to a 13-year-old when they're really talking to a 60-year-old 60 year old adult behind the computer sitting at home who is portraying themselves as somebody who's very popular, somebody who's very beautiful, very sexy, and they end up exchanging compromising, compromising photographs of themselves. And then the predator will use those photographs to extort them into potentially producing more sexually explicit photographs or requesting that they pay. Parents, this isn't supposed to be a scare piece. That's not the point of this story. We want to make you aware because when the FBI comes knocking on doors, the reaction from parents is, I never thought this could happen to my kid, but it can, and you have to take it seriously. You have lots of cases where minors, you know, luckily their parents intercepted them before they were set to go meet someone. That doesn't always happen. One case in particular sticks with Sablatora. It was Casey Woody, and her dad had done everything right. A Faulkner County teen who in 2002 thought she was talking to another teen. She was 13 at the time, but in fact she was talking with a 40-something-year-old male in California. He slowly learned more about her. Who was using any information that she could provide him on the Internet, such as where she lived, how many siblings did she have, does she have pets, what were the working hours of her father? He used that information to find her. Then he abducted her. Investigators tracked them to a storage unit in Conway. By the time law enforcement opened the garage door to the unit, they heard a gunshot, and he had already killed Casey, and he had committed suicide by the time they got to him. It's understandable that parents want to give kids independence, especially teens, but it's a dangerous dance with internet freedom. Parents, you cannot chaperone your kids enough. If you think you know all the email accounts your child is using, you think you know all the applications that they're using, I would say most of the time you're wrong. I don't think that children should have accounts that parents do not know the passwords to, that parents aren't actively checking. Bryant says her office typically prosecutes 50 to 60 child exploitation cases in a given year. Each one of those cases usually has more than one victim, sometimes three, four, five, six, up to 20 victims. And so the numbers, they don't lie. The FBI always takes tips. You can remain anonymous. If you need to report something, there are a number of ways to do so. You can look for this story on our website, fox16.com, and we'll tell you how.